Welcome back everyone. In this video, we discuss our networking and connectivity on the go. For those of you who have just found us, we've been traveling full time from the Arctic Ocean of Canada, through the United States, Mexico, all of Central America, and now we've shipped over to South America, currently in Colombia. And this is not only our full time home on wheels, but it's also my home office and our uh, video editing studio. And because we work online, digital nomads as we're called, our networking requirements are a little more significant than most campers. Uh, when we first started out five years ago, I had a very simple USB Wi-Fi adapter and a directional antenna, and I had those connected to a Raspberry Pi, which just acted as our router. But we soon overwhelmed that little system, and so we promptly upgraded to the MoFi 4500 LTE. As the name would imply, this is an LTE router. It also has Ethernet connections, and it creates a Wi-Fi hotspot for all of our devices to connect to, and this has been great. Like I said, we've been traveling down the Pan American for almost five years, and uh, all of our connectivity has all gone through this little box. All of our uh, YouTube videos have been uploaded through this box, and it's working really well for us. But MoFi does have a newer model with the newest, latest, and greatest features. And last time Kara went to Canada, MoFi hooked us up with a new 5500. Most notable uh, upgrades on this version over our 4500 will be 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi and gigabit ethernet. They're also available with 5G cellular if you need that sort of thing. But first, in classic Jason style, a slow and methodical unboxing. MoFi router itself, full swath of antenna, shielded Cat6 cable, constant voltage power supply, really nice SIM card adapter. So of course it's got a bunch of indicator LEDs across the face, the cellular one and two, the SIM card slot, USB, 2.4 gig and 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi. On the right side is the secondary cellular modem. There's a LED on off switch, an RJ45 console port, four gigabit LAN ports, a WAN port, reset button, USB, micro SD, 5.5 millimeter barrel connection, and a four pin 12 volt input connector here as well. So setup is pretty simple. We just take and now all there is left to do is install the thing. So our original 4500 lived up here, up behind this uh, second monitor I use for video editing as well as showing some of our vital statistics. And you can see it up here. I mounted it there because this is a wooden panel and it wouldn't block the RF from the radios too badly. But the 5500's got quite a bit more girth in her. So I think I'm going to mount it up here behind this air conditioning duct and put air up here on the ceiling. So let me walk you through. Quick recap, I've installed the MoFi 5500 up here on the rooftop with the Wi-Fi antennas pointing straight down at our toilet for best tweeting performance. And then I've connected gigabit ethernet uh, RJ45s to our most bandwidth intensive uh, devices like the network attached storage, laptop, and other mission critical components. So there it is all wired up. Let me show you its features. <laughs> okay, so the first thing you'll notice about the 5500 is the user interface has been updated and is much improved over the old 4500. That is especially uh, notable when using a mobile device. All of these menus are nice and responsive and large and easy to read on a small screen. Now because this is an enterprise class router, you'll see lots of intimidating jargon in here that's likely to perk the ears of all the uber nerds among us. Things like port forwarding. But I'm gonna keep this really simple and show you the major features that we use every day as digital nomads. So obviously the thing that sets router like this apart is the built-in cellular modems. Uh, this is available with either 4G or 5G and single or dual modems uh, with carrier aggregation for blazing fast speeds. 
Now we went with the 4G model because, as most of you will know, we've been traveling for the last four years through Central America and we've amassed our fair share of SIM cards. And in all of that time, in all of those countries, we rarely saw any 5G signals on our mobile phones. Even with our old 4500 here, we would see 4G LTE speeds in excess of 100 megabits per second. And believe me, that will chew up your data package plenty fast enough. But no matter whether you get the 4G or the 5G, the process would be the same. Whenever we get to a new country, we pop into a Claro or a Telcel dealer, pick up a $2 SIM card, and then using the very excellent SIM card adapter that MoFi includes with the kit, uh, pop that into the router, and blammo. All of your devices have data, all sharing the same data package. And cellular data can be really cheap. For example, as we travel through Costa Rica, uh, Tigo offers unlimited data for $5 a week, which is great because you just pop the SIM card in the MoFi and it shares it between all of our phones and laptops, no problem. Uh, here in Colombia, uh, the big one is Claro, and uh, we just refilled 24 gigs for 40,000 Colombian pesos, which is nine US dollars. Anyway, once the SIM card is installed, you're online. So let's do a quick speed test here. There you have it. The proof is in the pudding, is in the eating. I can already hear the keyboard commandos out there. I got the new iPhone 37 Plus XR and it can do hotspotting. I know, every modern cell phone can hotspot or you can even get a little hardware hotspot unit like this. But there's a few things to remember. Bars, batteries, Battlestar Galactica. A cell phone and indeed this little hotspot have tiny little ceramic antennas so that they're nice and compact and fit in your pocket. The MoFi routers have full length antennas that can reach distant cell phone towers and still pull in decent bars long after our cell phones show no signal. Secondly, batteries. Modern cell phones will automatically turn up the power to the radio amplifiers when the signal is weak in order to reach a distant cell phone tower. You've probably experienced this when you're out camping and watching Everlander's videos on YouTube and your phone gets unreasonably hot and your battery level plummets. And because they're comparatively small batteries, again, so they can fit in your pocket, you end up with a dead battery halfway through the day. And that's a big win for a router like this, because it can source as much power as it wants from our solar or house batteries and crank up the power to those amplifiers to reach a distant cell phone tower. And then it just makes a Wi-Fi access point and your phone only needs to reach a few meters to get the data. This brings me to another great feature about a MoFi router is if you're living in a van life sprinter van can, you can spin off the original antennas from the SMA connection and get coax extensions and place the antennas outside your vehicle where they can get signal outside of your metal box. And then inside you've got beautiful Wi-Fi bouncing around everywhere. Oh, or you can get yourself a set of these bad boys. These are the wire ENG directional MIMO antennas. When we're in areas of super low reception, I can usually point those at a cell phone tower and squeak out a signal when there's otherwise not enough to get any data through. And this is really simple. It's just a simple aluminum extrusion. And I have that stored here in a tube, part of our frame in the bottom of the chassis. And then the uh, antennas mount to the original bracket and I've just MacGyvered a uh, 5 RPM DC gearbox motor on there. And then I just have a little speed controller to help me direct and point it in the direction of the cell phone tower. Now we haven't needed to use those big antennas since we were in the US in BLM lands. Uh, all through Central America we had actually really good cell phone coverage everywhere, probably because of the population density. But uh, let me know if you're interested in a follow-up video on those. Okay, enough about cellular. What other tricks does this thing have? Well, because there's often times when we're in needs of larger amounts of bandwidth uh, that we don't want to pay through the nose for cellular for. Uh, as an example, software updates on the computer or your phones, uploading our photos and videos to a NAS back in Canada, or even uploading our next YouTube sensation. For that, we'll often use the Wi-Fi repeater functionality. 
Now this is more than just a simple repeater or an amplifier that amplifies an existing signal. Because the MoFi has multiple Wi-Fi radios, we can use one to join the free Wi-Fi at the campground or restaurant or wherever we happen to be, and then it repackages it inside of our own little private network and creates our own little uh, Wi-Fi that we can connect all of our devices to. And that's really nice because I don't need to go to all of my phones and laptops and cameras and all of our devices and enter the Wi-Fi credentials. They just, everything stays connected to our own little internal network and the uh, router fetches and redistributes the Wi-Fi all inside our little secure network. Another thing I wouldn't thought I would appreciate until recently is because all of our devices are all connected inside our internal network and then the router is connecting to a access point, we're only using one IP address and that has saved us because some of these Wi-Fi uh, access points get full and they will not accept any more clients and so by packaging all of our devices as one IP address we're able to make those connections and get everything online. And now, because the 5500 has 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi, we can connect to some of these networks where they've disabled their 2.4 gig and they only uh, broadcast a 5 gig signal. Because the router is built on OpenWRT, it has all of the features that you would expect from an enterprise class router like that. Uh, no way I can go through them all in a video like this, but I will spend five seconds each on a few of them that I think are interesting. All right, so failover and load balancing. I've not yet enabled it on this modem, but that enables me to connect to the campground Wi-Fi or restaurant or the town square, whatever, and it will automatically balance the load between the Wi-Fi and cellular, allowing me to upload a video when neither of the connections are very good. Something that uh, the 5500 can do that the 45 didn't is SMS messaging. So you'll see here it has the, the inbox and all of the incoming SMSs will be listed here and you can even send messages, but uh, we wouldn't do that. Receiving messages is sometimes handy to confirm that you've received a, a payment on a pay-as-you-go SIM, just confirming you've received the package you purchased. Not so amazing, but it is nice that the MoFi router has the ability to do a remote firmware update, uh, or rather an automatic firmware update more accurately. So here you can see uh, I'm on version 4.2.7, uh, and there is a new version that's five hours newer, also 4.2.7, and if I hit this, it would automatically update. I've done several updates like this already. Seems they're putting out new firmwares pretty regularly, but I'm not going to do that right now. Here's a neat one. You can connect to the two USB connections on the router, thumb drives or a hub and hard drives, whatever you want, or one of the little micro SD cards. There's a slot for that as well. And then share it on the network as a network share. And it will do Apple time share as well. And here, if we go to my file browser, you can see on the network uh, on the router, the files are there as you'd expect. Amazing. So I'll just blast through a few more here. Uh, bandwidth and filters, super handy. I haven't set this up yet, but it keeps track of how much data you've used uh, on the SIM card. We're already up to 7.4 gigs here. And of course you can set the usage date and bandwidth monitoring, very helpful because you can set which devices are allowed X amount of data so that you can turn off the Kindle and unimportant devices and keep them from doing unexpected firmware updates on their own. Speed limiter by MAC address would be handy if you're sharing with someone but they're swamping your connection. You can limit them to a smaller amount of bandwidth. Uh, it has a built-in ad block system so when enabled it cuts out all the typical advertisements you'd see while surfing the web. But as you can see, there are tons and tons of options in here for all kinds of advanced configurations and advanced control of port forwarding and all that sort of stuff if you need it. But uh, it's also not that difficult to get your head around if you're just starting out. 
you know, figure out the basics pretty easy. There is a wizard button up here in the top right that hit that, six questions and you're online, everything ready to go. Ah, VPNs I didn't mention yet. There's built-in support for Surfshark, ExpressVPN, IPVanish, NordVPN, CyberGhost, WireGuard, to name a few. Which brings me to the sponsor of this video. It's not a VPN. Our channel is supported by the generous contributions of these fine folks. Our supporting channel members let us make the sort of videos that we want to make without feeding you VPNs. So thank you guys for your support. If you're interested in the sort of content we're making, consider hitting the join button down below and check out the membership options that are available to you. And because I know a bunch of you are going to ask down in the comments, no, Starlink was not an option for us as we traveled through Central America. Uh, they're still not uh, through the regulatory process and it's not available in Central America quite yet. And while there is some Starlink service in South America, in Chile, and a little bit in the north of Colombia, uh, SpaceX's policy currently is such that you can only use it on the continent of which it was shipped and for a maximum of two months roaming out of your home country. So uh, while we could get one and then re-register a new account in each new country, uh, you cannot transfer the hardware from one account to another, and so that means buying a new dish for every country that we visit. So unless SpaceX changes their policy on this, we, it probably won't work for real overlanding world travelers. And the biggest reason we don't have Starlink is because Elon hasn't pushed the join button and joined for Channel 4 membership down below. Ha 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 ha! So, for completeness, there's a few things that bug me about the 5500. Uh, for the last few firmware revisions, there is no longer an NTP time server for all of our devices to get the time so that they can synchronize for cryptography reasons. Uh, secondly, there's no option for a GPS receiver anymore. I did use the GPS receiver on the old one to get the time sometimes, uh, but also uh, I've logged our GPS position every night and stored it in a database, so I have that access, have that available in the future. Uh, pretty minor issues, those. Uh, the biggest problem is the LED lights light up the whole inside of the truck at night, and while it is possible to switch off the front-facing LEDs, the activity monitor LEDs on the RJ45 connection still blink. So. My solution for that in the interim is a little bit of blue tack over each of the LEDs. But those are pretty small issues. I'm sure I'll find a way around. In any case, that's all I have for you today. Thanks, and bye-bye. <laughs>